Welcome to my continuing discussion on deferred taxes. At an early point in this topic, it's good to look at the difference between interperiod tax allocation versus intraperiod tax allocation. We talked about intraperiod tax allocation when we looked at the income statement many months ago. We're currently talking about interperiod. So first, let's have a discussion on interperiod tax allocation and what that's referring to. Interperiod tax allocation recognizes that accounting income and taxable income do not agree and that you are going to need to reconcile the two. You have accounting income of some amount, you have taxable income of a different amount, and there will be differences that you need to assess. Accounting income, it's done on GAAP. Taxable income is done on the Internal Revenue Code. And the differences lead to either deferred tax assets or deferred tax liabilities that will sit on your balance sheet until they reverse. They will reverse, but it will be in a different period, hence the name interperiod tax allocation. Let's now look at intraperiod tax allocation. Just as important but not even remotely related to interperiod. I'm going to use an example of a multi-step income statement because I think that helps you see this more clearly. You have sales. You subtract cost of goods sold. That leaves you with gross profit. You subtract your operating expenses. And that leaves you with operating income. You might have some peripheral gains or losses like interest income, interest expense, or sales on you know, other revenues, other expenses, or gains and losses. And that gets you to income from continuing operations. Haven't heard that term for a while. Once you know what income from continuing operations is, you show the tax expense that relates to that. And this tax expense covers everything that relates to your continuing operations. And then you have income before discontinued items and extraordinary items. If you have those. Discontinued items comes first. And you show that net of tax, but you show the tax effect with it right with it. So you will show the tax effect, and then you will net it, and that will be your discontinued item. And so the tax effect of the discontinued item is shown with it. If you happen to have an extraordinary item, it is also shown net. Both of these are shown net. And you show right with it the tax effect. So it's shown right directly with it. Then you have net income. And it's all said and done, and you can start doing your earnings per share for these areas. But earnings per share is not our topic, so we won't go into that. Intraperiod tax allocation says you must show this tax expense in income from continuing operations because that's what caused it. And this tax effect with the item that caused it and this tax effect with the item that caused it. Intraperiod tax allocation says you will take the tax expense for the period which is including everything in the entry, assuming no deferred tax assets or liabilities, you will take this number and split it. 
between the amount from continuing operations the amount that relates to discontinued items and the amount that relates to extraordinary items. You don't lump it all together and have one number called tax expense and whack it off the bottom. The expense is shown in the section that caused it. That's the difference between interperiod and interperiod tax allocation. Thanks for joining me.